And now, Pursuit. Pursuit. A criminal strikes and fades quickly back into the shadows of his own dark world. And then, the man from Scotland Yard, the famous Inspector Peter Black, and the dangerous, relentless pursuit. When man hunts man. In just a moment, tonight's story. Because ordinary laxatives act only in your lower digestive tract, they cannot relieve the acid stomach upset that often accompanies irregularity. Thus, they're only half effective. For relief that's fully effective, you need a laxative that also acts in your stomach. And that means Haley's M.O. It provides thorough relief because it works in two places instead of only one. Therefore, it makes you feel better, infinitely better than ordinary preparation. Try Haley's M.O. It's the best laxative ever made. Now, with Ben Wright starred as the famous inspector Peter Black of Scotland Yard, we bring you tonight's story. Too far, please, hurry. Yes, it's the Klinuit team. I, I don't know. Put in the car, will you? Mr. Gar? Mr. Gar? No, it's, it's Eminent Thomas. The superintendent is at the shop. It's a bad fall, Mr. Gar. Most of them got out, but a few are still down there. We don't know how many. I don't think there has been an explosion. Can you come right down? Or... No! Oh, is it down there, Will? I didn't turn around to look, Mr. Flowers. I ran for the sake of my life when I heard it coming. Haven't you got any idea who's still in it? I'm not sure. I was working along with Hugh Davies, Evan Lewis, and David Owen. I think maybe Ivor Williams was with us, too, but I cannot be certain. Mr. Flowers, I telephoned to the boss. He's on his way. All right. As soon as the dust is cleared a bit, we'll go down. Have any other men come up? I was the last, I think. Oh, uh, answer it, will you, Thomas? Yes, sir. matter with the thing? Why don't they answer up there? <laughs> oh, probably knocked it out. You're wasting your time at all. Well, no harm trying, man. Hello. Herbert. Hello. Who? Emlyn, can you hear me? It is David Owen. Yes. Tell, tell him. Tell him what's happened. Hush, tell him. man. Hush. Emlyn, there's four of us in here. End of the shaft. You, Davis, Evan Lewis, and me. There's E. Ford Williams, too. Can, can you hear me? E. Ford Williams, but he's dead. And you better have a policeman ready if you ever get us out, because he's been murdered. suffer from irregularity and take mineral oil for relief, chances are that you get only halfway relief. You see, irregularity is frequently accompanied by acid indigestion, and when this is the case, you need a preparation that combines laxative action with antacid action to bring you thorough relief. Now, plain mineral oil can't do this, but a remarkable preparation called Haley's M.O. combines the correct proportions of pure mineral oil with the finest milk of magnesia. As a result, Haley's M.O. gives you thorough relief. Not only relieves irregularity, but acid upset as well. And Haley's M.O. is so gentle 
that is frequently recommended for patients following delicate abdominal operations. When you see how much more Haley's M.O. does for you, you'll be amazed that it costs only about the same as high-grade mineral oil. You can identify Haley's M.O. by the big blue letters M-O on the package. Glen Newis was a village in South Wales. It was ugly, with the grey ugliness of mining country. Dirty, sullen, and with the inevitable poverty. When Detective Sergeant Moffat and I arrived from London, we only knew that there had been a disaster in the mine and a murder. I had a chat with the chief constable of the district who had requested our aid, but he knew little more than he had told us over the telephone. It was the morning of the second day of the Clinute disaster. I sent Moffat to the mine entrance to gather any information he could while I tried to interview the widow, Mrs. Williams. Here I met with no success. She was under sedatives, and the village doctor refused to allow me to question her. I walked back up the narrow streets to the mine. There was a light drizzle falling, and it seemed that the entire village was gathered on that desolate spot. I saw Moffat standing near a shed at the entrance. It was oppressively quiet. Every eye fastened on the black mouth of the tunnel. The relief crew's been down there for two hours now, sir. Should be coming up any minute. Well, how are they? The three in the shop. Superintendent Mr. Flowers spoke to one of them ten minutes ago. Mostly thirst from what he says. He is not too good either. Yeah. You get any more details on the murdered man, Williams? Not much, sir. He complained of a stomach ache just before the cave-in. And afterwards, before he died, he had convulsions like. At least that's what they say down there. That sounds like poison. The shot fire man, what was his name? Oh, uh, uh, David Owen? Oh, yes, sir. He talked to me on the phone from down there, and he says he knows it's poison. He's a St. John's ambulance man. Oh. Well, come on. Another crew will be going down in a minute or two. Uh, hello, Inspector. Hello, Mr. Flowers. Any progress? Slow. Very slow. It's worrying. Very loose down there. Very loose. If there's another fall... Well, you see, we can't afford to blast. I'd like to go down when you get close enough. Uh, I couldn't allow that, Inspector. I'm afraid you'll have to, Mr. Flowers. It's my job, you know. Too dangerous. I have reason to believe that a man has been murdered, Mr. Flowers. I've come up from Scotland Yard because your chief constable requested it. Now, when those men are reached, I want to be on the spot. Well, I'm not interested in policemen. I've got work to do. Something that might not interest you, Mr. Saving lives, not hunting them. Excuse me now. Nice thing, that. Oh, well, he's right, Moffat. You know, sometimes I do feel rather like a vulture. Only I suppose this time it would be more like a... Well, like a cat waiting for the mouse to come out of its hole. You're the inspector, aren't you? Uh, yes. My name is Will Vaughan. Can you come over here behind the shed a minute? I want a word with you. Oh, all right. Oh, it's dirty work down below. For every ten feet we go, five falls in again. Uh, you think there's any chance? Oh, there might be. Oh, now, well, this is it. The chaps and me were talking while we were digging. We thought you'd better know. No. About Ivor Williams. Oh, go on. He was no good. No good at all, that Ivor Williams. We don't keep with strangers coming here and asking questions, but it's better you know the truth than find out lies. Well, what is the truth? Ivor Williams was a lad with the girls. It was more than one fight he had over it. Oh, it is a great many men in Tlenuas who are not sorry to see him gone. I see. Is that all? Yes. And I am grieved for his wife, poor woman. She was a fool to marry him. But it was for love. Well, since you've gone this far, will you name some names? It would take a dozen men or more. There is those three still in the shaft. David Owen, for instance. It is his daughter, Dennis, that is the latest trouble. There she is standing over there. The dark girl. Oh, yes. This, uh, Eva Williams was interested in her? Interested? Now, there is an English word for you. From the talk of the women, it is more than that. David Owen swore he'd give Williams a terrible beating if he didn't stay away from his daughter. I see. Then Hugh Davies, that is Linus's man. They had to be married. Hugh knows about the talk. He had a proper rage about it. Poor chap, it does him little good now. You realize that you've given those two men a motive for murder? That's only two. What about Evan Lewis? They fought for two days before the fall. And I can go on with more. I may want you to when the time comes. It will be the whole village you can arrest before you are done. 
It is a great waste of time. Make your report that he died in the fall. Will Vaughn walked away from me, his face black with coal dust, shoulders stooped. And I wondered exactly why he had offered the information. These people are an insular lot. Right or wrong, they protect their own. And here I had been handed not only motives, but suspects. The day passed, and it became dark. Floodlights blazed down on the mine entrance, and the crews went down and came up again. The women brewed tea and made food for the men. Another day came. And the voices of those who were trapped behind tons of coal and dirt were suddenly gone. The telephone line had failed. At three o'clock in the afternoon, the superintendent sent word to me that the next crew expected to break into the shaft. I was given clothing and a helmet, and a few minutes later, a coal truck was rolling down the lines deep into the mine. Aboard it, five miners and one chief inspector got in the yard. All right, boys. Mind your head, sir. Yes, I will. We're shoring up with timbers as we go. That's the job of the shifters over there. <laughs> That's the carpenter's job. All right, easy now. We shouldn't have more than a dozen feet to go, but slow. Slow is the word. You two start with picks. We'll take turns. <clears throat> but if you must be here, you must inspect it, but stand out of the way. Give me a shovel. I can help. A London man in the pit. <laughs> All right. There's one on the truck. You'd have made a minor, you would. Oh, I, think it, I think it's easier being a policeman. What is it? Do you hear anything, Will? No. There. There, I heard it. They're all right. Here, give me the pick. I'll have a go for a bit. Thanks. I'm about done. We were working in a tunnel now big enough for only two men at a time. One working with picks, one carrying the dislodged dirt and rock to the entrance. It was a shaft within a shaft. The men could only work a few minutes at a time, and it was our turn. Will Bourne and myself. We measured our progress by inches, lying on our stomachs, hacking at the unyielding earth, ducking as a miniature landslide fell about, coughing in the dust it raised. Will Vaughan had crawled to the tunnel entrance when my pick lodged in the seam. I tugged at it and then... I'm through. I'm through. Are you all right in here? Yes. Yes, can we get out? I hope you brought some water. Uh, you? Yes, we did. Uh, bring some water in. Uh, can you walk? All of us except uh, Ivor Williams. <coughs> oh, come on, I don't want to look at him anymore. I'll drink outside. Wait a minute, Huey. You're the policeman, aren't you? Yes. Mr. Owen, we can talk about it outside. Come on. There was shake. Come on. Come on, it's another fall. Come on. Such a very little tunnel, wasn't it? And it took you so long to make. Now it's gone. What a shame you didn't bring in some water with you. a message of importance to millions of people who are continually pale and washed out, weak and run down. Doctors will tell you that these conditions are often caused by a deficiency of iron, the iron you need to build healthy blood to keep your body function properly 
and to keep you physically fit and mentally alert. Ironized yeast tablets provide you with a simple and effective way to get the daily iron your body requires. Ironized yeast is a concentrated iron tonic combined with high-potency brewer's yeast, one of the natural sources of vitamin B1. And every daily dose of ironized yeast gives you more than your daily minimum iron requirement in a form your body can easily use and put to work. Of course, pallor and weakness can come from other causes, so see your doctor regularly. But medical studies show that two out of three women, particularly those between 15 and 50, and many, many men lack sufficient iron. So if you're not getting the iron your body needs, if you feel weak, run down, and are easily upset, get new pep, vigor and color for only a few pennies a day. Start taking ironized yeast tomorrow. Now, the second act of Pursuit in Clanua's Mind. We stood there, heads bent a little, looking at what had once been the way to safety. Three feet inside the tunnel, it was black. Black with the solidity of a wall. I knew that the tunnel was 12 feet long but there was no way of knowing how much of the mine had caved in beyond. I turned away. The dead man, Eva Williams, lay huddled in a corner. When I looked at him, I knew that David Owen had been right. It was poison. Blue lips, fingernails. And as I moved away, I suddenly realized how thirsty I was. Might as well sit down and wait, boys. Have you... You got a cigarette? <laughs> yes. No, no. It'll make you more thirsty. Uh, you should have brought water in with you. I'm sorry. No. Oh. It's not your fault. What happened to the telephone? I really don't know. They were trying to find out when I came down. Uh, well, it's not too bad. The air is better now. They'll get through again. <laughs> What's your name? Inspector Black. I'm uh, Peter Black. <laughs> A very dirty faced policeman you are. Yeah. Um, how about... Him. And uh, what about him? And you were going to say something before, Mr. Owen. Yeah, I was. Something we have talked about, the, the boys and me, since we have been in here. Ah, what difference does it make now? Oh, it's the law, Huey. Ah. A man doesn't kill. That's the law. You think you know who did it? Yes. Remember, no. I'm not agreed to it. Don't forget that. Nor I. His wife, Catherine Williams... She stood more than a body can bear. I, for one, hold no blame. Why do you think she did it? I mean, proof. Because of my, my daughter, Glynis. Now, don't say it, Mr. Owen. Don't say it. There are a number of things I already know, Davis. Your Glynis never went with him, Mr. Owen. <laughs> it's a dirty lie made up by a lot of chattering old women with nothing better to do. She's my daughter, Hugh. I would feel it as much as you. I say it's true. Catherine Williams found out, and it was too much for her. Ah, that still isn't proof. No, it isn't. Catherine couldn't do a thing like that. She didn't. I heard him. I heard him in the pub. He was drunk and laughing. He may have tried to make up to her, but you wouldn't have let him. I was angry at the time, but Glynis wouldn't have let him. We are engaged. Nobody's arguing that. Huey Burke, let me finish. He was saying that he had some money put away and that as soon as there were a few more pounds, he was going to divorce Catherine and take Glynis away with him. Ah, oh, that's silly. Loud talk. You know it, Mr. Owen. That's all it was. <laughs> Maybe, but if the word got back to Catherine Williams, what then? <sighs> so then Catherine Williams killed him. And here we are. And who will be there to testify against her? I wish I had a drink of water. Now and again we tried the phone, but there was no sound. We sat in darkness a good deal, conserving the batteries in our lamps. And there was always the dead man in the mine. None of us wore a watch, and after a little while, time became something that was only counted in the remembrance of what seemed an age ago. They had been without water for nearly three days, and I knew what a torture it was becoming. My own mouth was dry and bitter. It may have been ours, it may have been another day. We took turns at the little tunnel, tearing at the loose dirt and rocks with our hands, and we became tired 
very quickly. <coughs> it's funny. What? Oh, I remember last week. I went to the tap and drank a glass of water. And then I filled the glass again because I thought I was too thirsty. But I wasn't anymore. And so I threw it away. I threw away the lovely water. Oh, it made a cool sound. That's enough! If I want to talk about water, Evan Lewis, I shall talk about water. It is a great comfort for me. Well, not for me. Shut up. You are not telling me to shut up. Well, look here. This isn't going to do any good. Save your strength. Uh, what for? So that we can die more slowly? Huey, try the telephone again. It may be working. Oh, as soon as I get my breath. In a minute. Huh. I'll do it. I'm going to have a bit of a sleep. Put out the light. Why doesn't he stop staring at me? Easy, man. Easy. He's not staring. We've covered his face. No, he's staring. Look at him. Make him stop. You can't even see him, Evan. There's no light. The dead can do you no harm, boy. Try to sleep. It, it will make the time pass sooner. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to dig again. I'm not going to sit here to die. Give me a hand, Mr. Black. Our hands were bleeding. And every handful of rock and coal and dirt was an agony to pull away. The darkness was never-ending. And as our batteries began to fail, it became a terrifying, alive thing. It was Hugh Davis who found the tea can. It glinted dully in the orange glow of his lamp. Look! Oh, look at this, boys! Listen to it! It's a tea can! Oh, it's wet! Did you ever hear a lovely sound like it? Oh, we can measure it out. There's enough there. Now, you chaps first. I'll miss this round. You've been here longer than chair I. Chair and chair. Be careful, you. Don't spill it, man. The lid's jammed. I... There. No. You can't have it. No. Give, give it back, Evan. Oh, no, don't give be it an me. idiot. There's enough for all. You'll have your share. No, stay back. There we are. Well, pour it out. Evan. No. You drink one drop of that, Evan Lewis, and I'm going to kill you. Now, <laughs> uh, come along now. You can have the first drink. It's all right. That's all right. It is. It is. It's he was. He's dead. He doesn't need it anymore. He's left enough for us all. Thank you, Ivor. Thank you. <laughs> he's, he's gone mad. I, I, I've got to sit here with my tea. And you'll all watch me. But you can't have any. Don't come near. Don't come near. All right. No, we can't let him. A shoey bar. Have a sip. And pass it. Eh, hey, Lewis? Oh, no. No. I'm keeping it. Go on, then. But don't forget, Evan. When we are outside, I'm going to kill you. You remember what I say. You'll not be fit to live. <laughs> What's the matter with him? He doesn't. Why doesn't he drink it then and have done? I wonder. Stay there. Don't come to you then. Why don't you drink it? If you're not going to, give it to us. No. No, it's mine. Stay away. I'll pour it out. Go on then. Pour it out. I will. I will. Stay away. Why don't you drink it? <laughs> Shall I tell you why? Because I think you know what's in it. You can't drink it, can you? Yes. Yes, if I want to. I, I will, too. Eva Williams drank some of that tea, didn't he? Before he died. I, I don't know. Don't, don't you go closer to me. Drink it, then. I will. But if you come closer, I'll pour it out. 
Then no one will have no, it. No, no, don't, don't. It means it, Mr. Black. Why did you put in that tea before you came down? Nothing. Then why are you afraid? I'm not. Well, there isn't much choice, is there? You're dying of thirst, but if you drink, you'll die of poison. Is that it? No, no, no. You know, no. if we want to get it, we can. Not enough will spill out. Now, why don't you give it to me? No. I can't. Yes. You killed him, didn't you? Yes. Yes. All right, now give me the can. No, no. You're not going to hang me. I'll I, I drink it. See? Don't. Don't. Take back your black. Come back here. Don't do it, Evan. Don't. We'll stand by you, man. Get away from me. Why, Evan? Why did you do it? He was wicked. Ungodly. He deserved to die. He was cruel. He made my life a misery. I, I was engaged to Catherine ten years ago. He stole her from me. He deserved to die. We treated her. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Evan. I am sorry. It doesn't matter anymore. We'll not get out anyway. It's better to go quickly. By drinking this. No, no, don't. Don't, Evan. The telephone. Hello? Hello. Hello, Inspector. Yes. Are you all right? Yes, we all are. We'll be to you soon. It wasn't a bad fall. Only a few feet. The men are clearing away now. Hold on. Thanks. Thanks very much. They'll be through in a few minutes. We waited. Watching. Listening. Evan Lewis crouched away from us. The tea can raised to his lips. Look! Look! Look, it's breaking through! Look! And in that moment... As we looked to where the point of a pick appeared in the wall, Evan Lewis tilted the tea can and drank the poison which he had given to Efo Williams. But it was useless. We brought him to the surface. And for the second time, his life was saved. Trial was held at Swansea. And Evan Lewis was convicted of murder. The Home Secretary denied an appeal. And nine weeks later, he was hanged. Pursuit, and the pursuit is ended. Pursuit is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis and written by Anthony Ellis. Music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Ben Wright stars as Inspector Peter Black with Raymond Lawrence as Sergeant Moffat. Featured in tonight's cast were William Johnstone, Tudor Owen, Anthony Ellis, Steve Roberts, Joseph Kearns, and Charles Davis.